Yeah, you look like, at someone like Bow Wow, but he flipped into acting gigs. Probably looking at it like, man, like, yeah, I didn't make any money off music, but music was the catalyst for all this other shit that came from me. So I'm cool with it. I'm happy yeah. not getting my bag over there. Like, I, That's a real strategy. Now, all that being said, there's an artist out there. He don't really care about his master's ownership. All right. At least not for some of his work. You talk about, you know, you talked about that a little bit, Jacory. How some people had that strategy. But this situation, I say, is a little bit different. All right. Because Bow Wow says owning your masters doesn't matter when you're a touring artist. Do you own your masters? No, nah, I don't look like for me, I don't really like people. I just had one of my partners ask me about that because you see everybody selling their masters. Yeah. Everybody yeah. Mm -hmm. selling their masters and this, that, and the third. For me, it's like, I don't really give two fucks about the masters, really. Because for me, number one, coming up, JD did majority of the writing anyway. Right. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, so early on, I really wasn't even writing shit. You know, I didn't start really writing until probably like my second album because I had to learn how to write. Like a lot of cats can rap, but they don't know how to formulate that into bars and this is the hook or, you know, people got their own little method. So for me, I kind of caught on late to it. You know what I'm saying? But it never, I really wasn't tripping because if you were a touring artist, I mean, although you never gonna wanna leave that paper out there, eventually that's something you can sit on and they'll come to you later on in life. But for me, I'm a right now type of nigga. Like, I tour. The shit that uh, Bow Wow said, one, I understand a little bit. Yeah. I wasn't writing this thing. Yeah. I'm just a performing artist. That's basically what he said. Yeah. I'm performing this shit. Goes back to that knowing the value of the person on the other side of the table thing, right? Yeah. Like he's like, this person giving me the hits. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Like, take what you want. He giving me the hits. <laughs> right. So how can you be like, I actually appreciate that perspective of, like you said, knowing the value, not getting so ego driven. I should own all this just because I'm the one who performed it and they coming for me. Yeah. All right. So that part I can appreciate. And I hope y'all get that detail. The part that I didn't like at, was the end where you're just like, I want to right now type of nigga. Yeah. That's, that's the part that made it seem like, damn, nigga, you just short sighted. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like, man, that's when it started to get rocky. Like, oh, man, <laughs> sounds like he's been finessed and he doesn't know. It hasn't clicked yet. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. That part right there. Eh. Okay. Like, <laughs> be more than right now. But one, the money you can make and do well with from touring, from touring is significant Two, yes if you actually monetize a celebrity brand you it is a real thing that you can do you have that attention mm -hmm. how do you monetize it so there are other streams so it's not like you have to be broke just because you don't own your music income yeah you look right? at someone like bow wow but he flipped into acting gigs and a all the other things. things so he, he's probably looking at it like man like yeah i didn't make any money off music but music was the catalyst for all this other shit that came from me so i'm cool with it i'm happy yeah. not getting my bag over there like i exactly you guys think i should be that's a real strategy again yeah. talk about thinking about the different things it's, it's no different it's a more invested and committed way to do it but on a small scale that's like having a song that you don't necessarily like connect with and then building your career after you get the attention from that song or even smaller scale having a video that's a little viral that's not necessarily your music but then using that attention and flipping it into yeah. the music career yeah. so like the strategy is a strategy there's so many examples of people doing one thing and then flipping it to a, a another thing no matter like what industry but yeah <sighs> i <laughs> only the, the not only your masters based off of the principles we said not with the energy he said i don't like that shit bro it was a little it was a little bit too loose it wasn't like Oh man, yeah, I don't I care remember, about masters, it. but I understand why. And in most in most people's cases, they probably should. Like, it was just like, yeah, bro, that's that child actor money, bro. Like, I said, <laughs> how you thinking different, man? How you moving in the world man, a little bit more loose? It's a different world where you come from, boy. And then Jeez. plus two, bro. Like, I'm just, I just believe that all the artists from that era are just like still in the matrix, man. They all just realized they were finesse for decades. You know what I'm saying? So the, I, I think we got to give them time. Yeah, man. So I was thinking about the part where Bow Wow was like, you know, I'm a touring act. Right, I tour, and you know we we all know that's not a, 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 touring isn't a saving grace that it used to be, but I can understand his mentality. Right? Why do I care about the money I'm making from the recorded music when there are all these other things the recorded music has afforded me to make money off of? And I thought about like what's the equivalent of that today for newer artists? Right? What would make them feel like fuck this music shit? I'm getting this bag, right? And to me, it's the brand deals, right? Why am I gonna why do I care if I made 15K off this music when this music helped me get a 100K Sprite bag or helped me get a, yeah. a, a half million dollar Target bag or, you know, um, 
I made an interview about the time where this comes out, but like the Derage interview where he talked about flipping music into sinks and shit, right? So I was like, hey, if I I just need it out there, and I know this label, this entity is gonna give me the resources to create something around me big enough to get it out there that I can flip these other five or six different looks. I could get where he's coming from, you know. I can I can understand the artist that views it that way. Him, I still don't know. Like it still sounds like he just he just got pulled out the matrix a little bit. He ain't really. He didn't really realize it all the way yet that he back in the, he back in real life. But the sentiment, right? That I don't care about music because I have touring. I flipped that today. Hey, I don't really care about music as much because I have content streams. I have brand deals. I can understand where he's coming from. Yeah. That's probably how like speed feels. You know what I'm saying? Quick second. Have you ever seen an artist catch some traction and then they start to move? The numbers start to grow. They might even go viral. But then fast forward a year from now. Somehow their numbers haven't really grown that much. They dropped back close to the same monthly listeners they had before the traction and viral moment. Well, that's because you have to know how to convert those moments into careers. And we've done this again and again with not only songs, but artists. And so has J.R. McKee, who's been a part of helping artists like Lil Durk, Rod Wave, Justine Sky, and Money Long. And we just did a collab where J.R. McKee does a step-by-step -step breakdown of how he took Money Long from zero to millions of monthly listeners and winning a Grammy over Beyonce, Mary J. Blige, and Jasmine Sullivan. Check out this breakdown while we still have it up. You can check it out at www.brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy. Don't forget the www or it won't work. Again, that's www.brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy. Back to the video. No, that's a fact. Yeah. 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 You got those people in the, <laughs> in the bags, not even where anywhere near as close. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do this music. Y'all do what y'all want to. It is kind of like just marketing for everything else. Yeah, exactly. It's a lifestyle thing. And I thought about it too because Speed and Casanat dropped this song together, and I was like, "This is such a terrible song, <laughs> and it's doing such crazy numbers." And I was just was so confused. And I was like, "Well, you know, with their audience, like their audience thinks it's cool. They pay attention to rappers. Yeah, it's a bigger brand flip, man. I'm gonna take this terrible music video and go flip it into a, I don't know." A bang deal or something like that. You know, I get, I peep the game, bro. I be seeing the strategy, man. You know, niggas, every time these influencers hit a million views, it's a new brand deal getting announced like a week or two weeks later. You know, that's the flow. <laughs> <laughs> so I get it. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, oh, man. I feel like there's a deeper conversation that we need to have about like, how much money you can expect for real, for real to make from your music directly. I mean, we kind of had that before. Whereas, like, really, even if you own all of it and you're making the, um, you know, you're getting income from streaming and all that stuff, really, mm -hmm. the money money is still going to be from other stuff. Mm -hmm. Even if you own most of your masters. And a lot of these cases, from what I've been seeing from artists that are pretty successful, pretty independent, that I know, it's like, all right, yeah, this money from streaming is either just, like, to pay some bills, all right? And at most, it's to reinvest and to then still be able to make mm -hmm. money from everything else. So you're still breaking even. I, I don't really know anybody who's like killing it, killing it personally. That's like told me it like, yo, that streaming bag, right, is a crazy bag. And like, I'm good. Right. It's usually even if it's a crazy streaming bag, but the career is so big, it doesn't really maintain like that person's lifestyle mm -hmm. and all the other things they need to do to continue to fund and grow that particular business around the artist itself. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So mm -hmm. a, a meal per year might be great for an artist at ground zero. Like who is thinking like, oh yeah, a meal per year from stream. I can live off of a meal. But usually that artist who's making a meal per year from that is like, I want to do like other shit. Mm -hmm. In most cases, there might be one or two other artists where it's like, all right, I mean, shit, even those artists have bigger aspirations and they're just like, I'm going to make money from this music and let these streams run up and then I'm going to just go do some other shit and leave. Yeah, go start a cement business or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's nobody that I know who's like, yeah, let's just main tank. I, I'm doing 500K in streams every month and I, I'm just going to maintain this 500K in streams every month and successfully doing that. <laughs> and now I'm living in like a consistent life off of that, like or 500k a year even. Like that, I don't know. It, it might not be a thing. We try to promote it like yo, be indie, and I don't. I'm not saying don't be indie. I we we try to promote it as if it's easier or, than it is, or you're making more money than you would think in these cases. But really, I feel like the what based on what I'm seeing so far. You're only making the money to put into other things and reinvest in the business. 
Now, that's off of streaming income. Your master's is different than the streaming income. That's going to create all kind of other opportunities that you can't even see down the line. Mm -hmm. And back to Kevin Lyle's statement, not owning it just to own it. What I do think is a thing is you can own it and then not know how to monetize your masters. Yeah. Like we're not, Cause again, we're not just talking about, Oh yeah. Cause somebody streamed your shit. Like your the biggest opportunities, especially if you get yourself in a certain position for your masters is not just going to be like streaming some more songs. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be whatever that might look like, whether that's sync or just new platforms and avenues. Like there's so many things that your masters can be uh, monetized from, which we need to do an episode because I I don't think I'm fully aware of every way uh, masters can be monetized or strategically how someone who owns a masters and really does that, yeah. with how they look at it. I feel like an episode is going to need some some detailed research. Nah, need some detail looking for somebody who can talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Nah, sound like a sound like a uh, PBS special, man. Right. Like, no. Hey, hey, y- y'all go ahead and donate five dollars so we can <laughs> pay somebody <laughs> that, to create. Hit that super subscribe button, yeah. whatever it's called. Yeah, super chat button. Yeah, hit that hit that <laughs> that button. Go ahead and give us a little donation, and we'll we'll pay and create an entire mini doc on what you should do with your masters and hire hire the right people and everything. And when you should give them up, let it go. And that's fine.